You're lucky you have a wife to support you. That's what you're lucky about. Yeah. That's what I tell her every day, Carla. <laughs> have a nothing. And Karma, you have like a tropical forest behind you. Yes, that's quite a plant that. It's taller than me. Nice. It's, a, it's first, I don't know what it's called, it has a name, but uh, it's a, it was a shoot that was brought home, a stick from Marijuana. Expo, Expo 67. Oh, no. Marijuana. And what's that? Marijuana. Marijuana. <laughs> you wish. <laughs> uh, this isn't the original plant, but the original plant died. But before it died, my dad took some more clippings of it. And then we grew this. Wow. I can't keep it. It's the only place in the house that'll fit. Huge. <laughs> Are you ready, Jamie? There you go. Yep. So, uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to members of council, staff, and anyone watching on Facebook. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Are there any declarations of pecuniary interest or the general nature thereof? Seeing none, uh, seeing none except the agenda, I have a motion moved by Deputy Mayor Williams, seconded by Councillor Massey that the Council of the Township of North Glengarry accepts the agenda of the regular meeting of Council on Monday, January 10th, 2022. Are there any uh, discussion on the agenda? Seeing none. All those in favor? Motion is carried. Adoption of the previous minutes. I have a motion moved by Councillor Massey, seconded by Councillor Noble that the minutes of the following meetings be adopted as circulated, special meeting of council, December 13th, 2021, regular meeting of council, December 13th, 2021. Any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried, thank you. There are no delegations. Moving on to stra uh, staff reports, administrative department. Uh, verbal update. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I just wanted to provide a quick verbal update on the uh, latest on COVID-19 as it pertains to uh, the Township of North Langary. Um, so as Council is aware, um, we have closed our arena as well as our uh, dome as per the provincial uh, guidelines. We've also closed the main office here to the public, but we wanna make it very clear to our, everyone that if you do have business to be done at the main office, um, certainly you can give staff a phone call or an email and make an appointment. Um, I know I, I do come in the office every day as well as Manik um, and other staff are working from home, but they can come in to serve the public um, if necessary. And I do hear people coming and they'll knock on the door and Manik has, has serve them as well as people coming in to do business. Um, also, there are some planning and building staff in the, in the premises as well. If there's anything that people want to look uh, at permits, if they do want uh, that personal touch, they can come in the office. However, we do encourage people to do as much as they can uh, on the phone and via email as well. Um, we have done some extra cleaning um, here at the office as well as other, other facilities and um, the fire stations as well as the public works garages um, because unfortunately not all of our staff are, are able to work from home. We do have essential services such as uh, the fire department, water, roads, um, being that it's winter. Um, and we've also um, done some, uh, have the option of people if they want to do some rapid testing for the essential services um, and we've rolled that out as well. We're keeping track of any uh, COVID-19 exposures as well as any staff that are have tested positive. We do have a couple of staff that are, however, it was over the holiday and they're working from home. Um, so we're managing that quite well. And certainly a uh, senior management team as well as myself and some of the other managers are in constant uh, communication 
uh, to make sure that the, you know, the number one message to staff is that they socially distance, wash their hands, wear their masks, and if they're sick to stay home. Um, so that's, that's the key messages that we're, we're encouraging all of our staff as well as our residents to, um, to, to stay with. So certainly if I have any, if council has any questions, I can uh, answer them, but that's sort of where we are right now um, with COVID-19. Great, thank you. Any questions or comments from members of council? Deputy Mayor Williams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Sarah, I know that essential services, well, across the province is, there, there's been some, some concern that, you know, everyone might start going down at once um, and that not be able to provide those services. Is there any indication of a threat of that here in North Glengarry? Um, so through you, Mr. Mayor, so it, with our new uh, Public Works Director, Tim Wright, we've had those conversations, those key conversations. In water, we've gone to a Teams system, so, um, and also asked them to separate so that they're not connected uh, with each other, that there no, be no workplace outbreak in the Water Works Department. We have been in co uh, conversation as well with South Glengarry, just, you know, thinking that we maybe have to share some staff. Um, but we're looking at in that department, we're, we're in pretty good um, state right now. The same with the garages. So we're asking them to uh, not congregate, to be in their own trucks. And we're also doing an extra cleaning as well. So being that um, certainly Tim is monitoring any staff that have um, symptoms or are off, we're also doing it corporately just so we have a better idea. So Currently not an issue, Karma, but certainly we have, um, you know, availability of staff from the, from even from the county, perhaps with the roads department, if we ran into a situation that we were down in staff. Um, I'm hoping that we don't run into it, you know, overnight so far, um, you know, with the Christmas holidays, that was the concern. Um, we haven't seen that sort of wave come through quite yet. Um, certainly from the Christmas break, uh, as far as Christmas Day and Boxing Day, that seems to have, have uh, we've gotten through okay with that. It'll just be the New Year's and then um, anything else going forward. So uh, certainly number one thing is education with staff and, and keeping track of who's off and who's not, but so far so good. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any further questions or comments? Seeing none, thanks for your report, Sarah. Moving on to Community Services Department, award of contract for the Glengarry Sports Palace refurbishment. Um, I have a motion moved by Councillor Madden, seconded by Councillor Manley, that the council receives the staff report number CS202201 and that council approves the award of the contract for the Glengarry Sports Palace refurbishment to Freecon Construction Limited in the amount of $3,593 plus HST. That council approves that the project be funded through a combination of the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program, Community, Culture and Recreation Stream Grant Funding, transfers from reserves and debt, and that the major, uh, the mayor and chief administrative officer are hereby authorized to execute the documentation relevant to this project. Welcome in. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as council will recall, this is a long going project. We initially approached council back in 2019 to write a grant to ICIP for funding to help with the refurbishment of the Glengarry Sports Palace. We were advised in April that we had received the grant and we then proceeded to uh, the engineering phase of the project and then the tendering phase. The numbers that came back are indeed a lot higher than we had expected. We knew that we would have some impact due to COVID. And we also knew that the numbers might be higher due to the additional components that we had added to the project. That said, uh, we worked, uh, staff worked with the CAO as well as with the treasurer to present a financing breakdown that gave different options, either awarding the contract in full or option two, three, four, and five, which would take away some of the uh, different components without jeopardizing the grant as it stands today. So we're actually bringing this recommendation to council following submissions that were received on the tender. We did indeed receive four submissions. Two of those did not qualify. One of the submissions did not acknowledge the addenda in the uh, RFT. 
and the other one did not submit the cost breakdowns. So we were left with two submissions, which were Freecon as well as Grant Marion. And as you can see, both of these are very close in pricing, but our tender does dictate us to award to the lowest tender, which in this case would be Freecon Construction Limited. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Um, this is uh, somewhat disturbing considering the amount of money that we had budget for. Um, and secondly, that's disturbing is the fact that two companies bid it at almost exactly the same cost, which uh, uh, tends to make me think that uh, that is what the true cost will be. Um, so um, I've looked through the, I've looked through the options and uh, unfortunately, none of them really seem palatable to me. Um, you know, I think that we may have to, this is again, just my opinion that we may have to retender this project. Um, we're lucky that we do have Maxville that is still open and can, uh, you know, should we not get this done in time, but uh, um, I really think that we should uh, retender with, with the, um, with everything separated out so that we can make a decision based on um, just basically, maybe, you know, if we have to go with just what we need, then that's what we need to go with. So anyways, I'm looking for council's uh, recommendation on this, Councillor Manley. Yeah, I, I have to agree with you, Mr. Mayor. I, I really, I mean, we went from a, a $2.1 million project to a $3.7 million project and it, it's just, and unfortunately, the municipality is going to pick up the, the, the shortfall of that and be paying it off for, for 25 years if, if we, we were, went through a, a loan process or whatever. Um, I, yeah, I really think that we have to relook at this somehow and uh, whether we go back to, back to the province and the feds and explain our situation again to them, um, I think that maybe we could, who knows? I mean, I, I think we have to explore those options in order to make, uh, make this uh, reasonable for, for our taxpayers or whatever, thank you. Yeah, I definitely think that we should, uh, we should be tapping uh, our local MP and our local uh, MPP to uh, work on our behalf. Uh, uh, if anybody thinks that the pricing that was, uh, you know, that we did about a year ago or a year and a half ago is the same today, uh, you know, they're sadly mistaken. And unfortunately, yeah. it's not like we can say, let's hold off until, uh, no, until the can't. pricing comes down. Uh, it's not an option. I mean, uh, we've yeah. already started to rip up some things, so it's... Um, yeah, we, we're going to move forward. So, uh, Councillor Wensink, you had your hand up, uh, and then Count uh, Deputy. Yes. Roller. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I agree as well. I think we need to take a little more time to look at the costs, break down the costs, and see if we can tender the project again. So, I'm glad that we're going to give it a little more time. Uh, Deputy Mayor Williams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I <clears throat> I agree with your point. Uh, you know, it, chances are prices aren't going to go down anytime soon. Um, however, the, when you take into the contingency numbers that were used up out of the original budget um, and then combine it with the, uh, the, the increased costs, this project cost has actually doubled. And so, you know, I really think we, ne we need to, uh, the taxpayers certainly would be expecting that. And, and I think it's unfair for us to expect them to ab absorb that, that cost in debt over time. So breaking it up, I think, is a good idea. Uh, who knows? Um, maybe maybe other funding will be forth, forthcoming. A provincial election is on the horizon, and um, and and I think if we think creatively about this and strategically, that you know maybe we can make this a little more affordable for the for the taxpayer. And meanwhile, um, uh, you may you know make sure that this project goes forward because we need to, we need to make sure it gets gets completed uh, you know, as soon as possible under the circumstances. The, o the other thing I just wanted to mention is um, uh, I, I think council's gonna need their eyes uh, in a little more detail on this project going forward um, when it comes to how those pieces are broken out and the associated uh, budget figures that go with those pieces. Um, because my, and this is just my personal opinion, I'd like to see us work with the original numbers uh, that were allotted uh, in this project, because that's what you know our, our rate payers are expecting was were expecting, which was a 2.1 million dollar project. We know that we can 
we can spend those dollars without question. And, you know, so maybe if we look at the first phase, um, hopefully the, the most uh, critical infrastructure um, will fit within that $2.1 million um, parcel. And, and we can get going on getting this uh, facility back up and running, uh, even if we don't end up getting it all done at once. Thank you. Okay, sorry. Am I the only one that's uh, freezing up here, or is everyone else freezing up? It was me. Yeah. Okay. Just you. One second, please. Do you want, Mr. Mayor? Shall I repeat myself? Ah. Uh. <laughs> that was a joke. Uh, he's frozen. Sorry. The mayor is frozen. <laughs> Don't back. freeze. I'm back and I can hear you. And uh, my answer to your question is please no. Uh, okay. So then can I ask a question? Uh, yes, just, uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mr. Yes, yeah, thank you, Mr. Oh, hello again. Um, and sorry that we're ripping apart your project. So I have two questions for you. Um, from what I remember seeing, the boards are off, the glass is off, the seats are out. So obviously, that's done. Um, but what does the grant allow us to cut out and what needs to be done? Obviously, everything should be done, but what needs to be done and do we have to start over? Can you just cut out some stuff or do we have to start from scratch, so to speak? So thank you through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the options that we had presented council were the options that uh, we thought would not impact the grant. If we're going back to the drawing board, we're going to really take uh, into consideration everything that had to do with accessibility, as well as energy efficiency, and make sure that we're concentrating on those. So we will do everything we can to ensure that those components comply 100% to the grant. Okay, and the big, sorry, to follow up, the biggest thing was that the slab was needed to be replaced. That's the Absolutely. genesis of the project. Okay, so that has to be done no matter what. Absolutely. Thanks. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Oh, can you hear you? Somebody, you're frozen your, your again. Picture's frozen, but we can hear you. Was it, is it frozen in a good, do I look good? <laughs> oh, there you, there you go. Now we can see it. You got your hands moving there, you're good. It, it wasn't, to be honest, it wasn't your best side. It wasn't a good look. <laughs> well, thank you, well then. Um, okay, so just to uh, comment a little bit on uh, what Councilor Noble was saying. Um, I think that we are gonna go back to the province anyways and uh, uh, the province and the feds and discuss the use of that, uh, uh, of those monies. So I think it, it, by, you know, defeating this motion and passing a, another motion, I think it gives us the opportunity to go back to the province uh, and feds and, and, and negotiate with them. I think we need to understand that, um, you know, the money they've given us is just, it's not suitable for the project. So for us to move forward, we either need more money or we need the latitude to change the parameters of the project. So uh, I think that's something that we're gonna have to look at over the next month. Uh, I think that's possible, Anne. Definitely. Okay. Further questions or comments from members of council? Good. Councilor Madden. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I just wanted to clarify the accessibility and the energy efficiency were part and parcel of this grant, right? Like that was that was a big aspect of this that we had to we had to make sure was included. Yeah. Right? Through you, through you, Mr. Mayor. Absolutely. Those were uh, the components on which the whole grant was built. So we were looking at accessibility for the spectator stands as well as the bathroom areas and uh, the players change rooms, as well as the arena slab, which was the energy efficiency. And we had some uh, exit um, doors as well as entrance doors. So there were a whole bunch of components that were listed in the original ask when we went to council for us to apply to the grant. So, sorry, if I may follow up. Um, if, and I'm just, I'm going very if here. Uh, so say we take the, the uh, lobby bathrooms out, would that, do you think, affect our, uh, our ability to get this or to use this grant money? Because that was part of it, right? That was part of what we had proposed. 
so I think our best thing at this, and I won't be answering the question directly, I think our best thing would be to go back to our grantors and speak to them about how we can work in the parameters of the grant. So how much leeway we have. I don't want to say yes or no, because I, I think that has to come from them. Fair enough. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Wensink, you had a question? Yes. And can you just remind us what the cost of the slab was, what we had to spend to replace it? Um, so one of the quotes that came back from FreeCop was $800,000 for the arena slab itself. Mm -hmm. And that technically is supposed to include the dasher boards as well as the glass. But we also don't have the full breakout of exactly what components are included in that. If uh, we do have the breakout for the HVAC, we have the breakout for the electrical, we have the breakout uh, for plumbing. So some of the costs related to the arena slab might be in those. So we rather, um, I don't, we wouldn't want to award only on the arena slab because we may be short and we might also not be compliant with the grant. All right, okay. Deputy Mayor Williams. Thank you. Um, and can you please share uh, the, the new budget uh, um, items with us, please? Get a definitely, chance. Definitely. That was passed on to the CAO, and I'm certain she will be sharing that with you. Thank you. Okay, so um, we have a motion on the floor, so I will put that motion to the vote, and that is to award the contract at $3.593 million. All those in favor of the motion? All those opposed to the motion. Okay, motion is defeated. I will read you a, another motion. I have a motion moved by, and I'll use the same people. Councillor Madden, seconded by Councillor Manley. The council receives staff report number CS 202201. And that council directs staff to request the engineering firm to split out the Glengarry Sports Palace refurbishment project into phases and issue a new tender based on the phases. Any discussion on this? Councillor Madden. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a quick question that occurred to me. If we go and do this, we go uh, and ask for a tender based on phases, I'm gonna presume, but correct me if I'm wrong, we would put in those documents that we will not necessarily be awarding the tenders. It will be based on the available funds. Am I correct in saying that? Uh, yes, I believe so. Well, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so through you, Mr. Mayor, our tender always contains the condition that a tender is only awarded one, through council, first of all, and it is based on funds. Okay. Okay, Councilor Manley. Wondering, do we need something in that resolution as well that talks about uh, reaching out to the province and the, and the federal government regarding uh, regarding this? It, should that be in the, the motion too, or is that just an assumed? Uh, that's assumed that we're no, it doesn't need to be. Uh, we're going. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, we we'll have to. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any further questions or comments on the motion? Seeing none. All those in favor of the motion. Motion is carried. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, uh, moving on. Ooh. Sorry, I've lost my agenda in my mess here. here we go. Okay, moving on to the Treasury Department. We have a temporary borrowing bylaw. 01-2022, the motion moved by Councillor Manley, seconded by Councillor Wensink, that bylaw 01-2022 being a bylaw to authorize temporary borrowing from time to time during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2022, and that bylaw 01-2022 be read a first, second, third time, and enacted in open council this 10th day of January, 2022. Welcome, Kim. Uh, good evening, Councillor Mayor. Um, this bylaw is just a standard bylaw. It provides for temporary borrowing by the municipality if required during the 2022 fiscal year for an amount up to $2 million. It basically um, handles any shortfall we might have between when we receive uh, revenues for taxes and expenses. 
um, it's it's kind of a standard thing. We do it every year and it's just a formality, so. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments from members of council? Seeing none, all those in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you, thank you council and mayor. Okay, uh, moving on to new business, abandoned cemeteries. I have a motion moved by Deputy Mayor Williams, seconded by Councilor Massey, that the Council of the Township of North Glengarry supports Prince Edward County's call for government action concerning the current legislation and regulations surrounding municipal requirement to take over and maintain abandoned operating cemeteries, and that a copy of this resolution be sent to local SDG municipalities, the Minister of Government and Consumer Services, Roma, and the Eastern Ontario Wardens Caucus. Sarah, will you speak to it? Uh, sure, Mr. Um, so this is a motion that uh, has been circulating around. And I know um, for us here at North Glengarry, we do not currently uh, manage any of the you know, cemeteries that are abandoned. But I know I've had some conversations in 221 uh, with a couple of groups that are looking to um, you know, give them over to us. And it's a requirement that the municipality does so um, without any funding. So that's the concern is that this is something that we would have to um, roll into our tax base. I know when I speak to other clerks, um, certainly this is something that they have to manage. Um, and then there is also the possibility that of any of the cemeteries that are active also could come our way, which is even more of an administration, um, I'll call it a nightmare. Um, so this would be something else that we'll have to consider in 222 um, for North Glen. And we felt that based on that, that it was uh, certainly um, something that we wanted to support um, as far as this motion. And I'll just say that the uh, uh, United Counties of SDNG supported this motion at the last meeting. So um, any questions or comments from members of council? Councillor Manley, then Councillor Noble. Yeah, I, th I think it's a great idea that we should be supporting this motion because we, we're going to have we're going to have some cemeteries for sure in the in the near future that are going to be. I'm I'm thinking uh, uh, the Gordon Church in Saint Elmo for sure, and uh, they're, they're, we're going to have other ones too or whatever. So um, definitely, I think I support that uh, letter. I'm also wondering, uh, Sarah, if we couldn't add. Uh, you, I noticed in the letter it said Minister of Consumer and Corporate Affairs. Is it that government sending this to or? Yeah, I wonder if that is that person on the uh, the list for delegations, uh, Good Roads, and if so, maybe we could get a delegation in um, to to that. Uh. So through you, Mr. Mayor, certainly I can check Councillor Manley. I'm sure that okay. that uh, they are on the list, and uh, I can add that to our Good Roads uh, request. Okay. Yep. That would be great. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Councillor Manley. Councillor Noble. Um, I just have a, it's not that long, but I just have a little bit of information. Um, just something to think about. I don't know if you want to rewrite the resolution, but just things to keep in mind. Um, I'm one of six volunteers at Renzibert Albin Cemetery, and we, take, we took over the Macintosh Cemetery, which was abandoned a while ago, and we take care of it for free. Uh, just to give you an idea, we spent $1,800 a year on grass cutting. We sold, we just changed our price, but we sold lots for 300. 250 of that 300 goes into that care and maintenance fund mentioned in the resolution. And we sell one lot a year. So $50 of revenue doesn't exactly pay the 1800. So that's why some of these, some of these cemeteries are abandoning. Um, our care and maintenance fund has 7,000. That only goes to the next person that takes over. We don't have access to that money, uh, but most cemeteries don't have, a very large amount, again, based on revenue. Uh, majority of local cemeteries are volunteer run. Not all of them, including ours, and many around here are not, are not associated with the church, which means you don't have that fallback. Most of the volunteers, including our group of seniors, uh, not all volunteers are connected to the church or the cemetery. So they don't have to stick around and they sometimes don't stick around. Uh, I can appreciate the request for money, but what the BAO really needs to do is run excuse me, find help to run these sacred spaces as only closed cemeteries should be abandoned. So you shouldn't have that nightmare, Sarah. That's why we were looking at the Macintosh one. They should, you should not be abandoning a, a running cemetery. 
Um, but every current graveyard committee needs to have a succession plan and that may not be achievable if the help is not found. And unbeknownst to many people, tombstones or tombstone maintenance is not the purview of our caretaker or any caretaker. It's up to the family to remember that each marker holds a story and that the collection of monuments holds historical significance as mentioned in that, um, that resolution. So your family plot deserves more attention than we can give, whether it's municipality or just a, a small committee. So that's why I think the ask should not just be for financial aid to help municipalities take over, but the BAO needs to follow up with all registered cemeteries and plot holders and create a care and maintenance plan for the property to ensure their relevance is not forgotten. So it can't just be asking money to pay for the grass cutter. These, these places should be taken care of better than getting the grass cut every couple of weeks. So the BAO, the ones who have been, I, I get emails from them every week and they stick their nose in every bit of our business which again is why you're losing some volunteers, but there needs to be a plan because there's just, cemeteries aren't going anywhere and people are gonna keep going in them, but there won't be people around to run them. So I really think this is a very, it's a very large issue that yes, yeah, should be brought up at, at Rome or Good Roads. So uh, just, I mean, this uh, resolution is not just about money. It's, it's about uh, a call for government action concerning the current legislation and regulations surrounding the municipal requirement. So I, I think it's uh, in the original uh, from Prince Edward County, it, it outlines all kinds of, uh, of these issues. So um, I, I, I mean, unless we need to add something in, uh, Madam CEO, do you think that we need to put something else in there? Um, through Mr. Ware, no, I think, I think Brenda, you or Councillor Noble, you may want to uh, help me write the uh, delegation request for good roads for sure. Um, I think the current resolution is, is probably good. I think there is some legislation that needs to change, which is the sort of the backbone for the issues that you're seeing. Um, and then maybe, you know, when we meet with the minister at good roads, we'll have a better indication of if they do have any plans to change anything in the future based on all the resolutions like this that are going around. Yeah, glad to know it's not just us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Councilor Noble. Any other further questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion. Motion is carried. Okay, so uh, uh, next regular public meeting of council is Monday, January 24th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. And uh, we will be going into closed session so uh, unless council anybody has anything further to state publicly at this point, uh, we will be adjourning this meeting and then heading into closed session. So I'd like to thank uh, all members of council and staff for joining us tonight, as well as people watching at home, uh, asking everyone to please stay safe as our numbers continue to rise. And hopefully we can get back to a normal world again sooner rather than later. So uh, everyone, please take care. And uh, we'll see you on uh, the 22nd of January. Have a great night. Thank you. Good night. Great. Good night.